Directly behind me is a two acre hay field. Every year, this hay field will produce approximately $1,000 worth of hay on a good season. Over the course of seven years, it will produce roughly $7,000 in revenue. That doesn't include operating costs. As a first generation farm, we're always on the lookout for new ways to diversify our crops and really dive into the niche market. So what if I told you that we could take this two acre hay field and instead of getting $7,000 over the course of seven years, we could actually earn upwards of $60,000 or more. Have I got you interested? Let's go take a look at what we're doing on our first generation farm to make money and provide a stable income for the next generations should they choose to take it on. This is the WT Farm Girl channel. If you are not subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and click the bell and go back and watch all of the previous videos on all of our excitement out here trying to run our first generation farm. Let's go. This is our trees. Six inch auger should be uh, fun today. Yeah. Bob, I'm gonna move the trailer. Be a well, time. this says 250, and we had two stacks of 250, right? Yeah. So what is this? Does it say 250? That says 250. These, this... are, these are definitely our trees. These will easily fit on this trailer. How old are these pine trees again? Just for fun, you should count and see how many times I say pine trees instead of fir trees. These are all firs. They're not pines. But nonetheless, I keep calling them pines. So just keep track and put your comments down below. Fir trees, sorry, they're not pine trees. Fir trees? All right. That'd be better like that. We'll just do a four stack. Hold on, bud.
just got back and uh, for our new crop, we are gonna have the front filled in. We don't need it filled in just yet, but as it happened, there's been a lot of construction on our road that's near our house and Eric ran over and told the guys if they have fill dirt, they can dump it over here. So we are now getting our uh, drainage pond filled in. So that's pretty crazy. Cause I never saw that. I never thought this day would come. pretty good yeah 250 in here 250 over there all right but these are slower growing than those those are supposed to be 18 to 24 inches a year these take 12 years to mature ten. okay 10 yeah so that's 10 year investment right here 8 to 10 well on this size of tree a little bit less time because these are a little bit bigger potted tree. And these are fur trees. They're nice, dude. They're not even pokey at all. No, because they're furry. They're fur trees. Oh, you like that? Okay. Puppers. Let's not eat the top off my pine tree. We Get need to worry about the deer, not the puppers. Yeah, we shouldn't have to have doggies eating our trees. for this but I couldn't get it installed in time. I guess that works. It just keeps them from blowing around. And then, we're gonna pull it up. I'm gonna grab the tree right here, do a little pinch on the bottom, and it will slide right out, just like this. Now we wanna make sure when we plant this, that it's actually the same level as the ground. So right about right there. Now this has fertilizer on it. If you really want your trees to do well, um, either put some manure in the bottom, around the top, or you can use uh, tree tablets. Uh, that's what we're gonna go through and do at the very end is put some tree tablets in. You don't wanna put the tree tablets directly in the soil with the tree. You're actually gonna put them just slightly off to the side and just a couple inches down on the top. Thursday, we managed to plant 120 trees, or about two rows. Unfortunately, the next Friday was rain all day and all night. 
which meant that that next Saturday, it was wet. But we couldn't stop. We had to get the trees in the ground before it got too late in the season. And then, much to our surprise, several of our grown kids and their families came to help plant pine trees and worked the entire day. I didn't get all of them on video, but I did get a couple. Oh, I know. I remember the fence digging, Dad. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that Oh man, he's he's getting stuck. Oh, he's only got it in two-wheel drive too. That's a wow, that's crazy. And it's not like he's even got any weight on there. Wow. Man, that's a lot of a lot of mud. So we'll probably end up having to get a hand auger, a yeah. motor powered one, just after they get cut, cut down. I think that's the protocol. All right, so we got our first hole. The one kid grabs the tree, the other kid grabs the tablet. He stuffs it in the hole as far as he can go. And then Aaron sticks the tree in the hole. Yeah. All right, so now our part it is a little more involved because it gets really messy. Okay. So this ground isn't too bad so far. So we're gonna pull the tree out. We wanna make sure that it's not too deep. So we might need a little bit extra dirt in the bottom just to make sure that it doesn't get planted too far down. Okay. So about like that. Grab the tree at the base, pinch, and then you just kind of pull it on out. Okay. Set it down in there. Make sure it's just slightly above the grass level. And then you just kind of squish the clay all the way down and around it. And then you want to make sure the tree is as straight as possible so it grows straight. Yep. 
You just smack it on in. Okay. There it is. And then you've got to stack these up because otherwise they blow away. Okay. All right. So you want to try this one? Yep. I'll do this one while you do that one. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was really nice. nice. Yeah, you can pack them a little harder. Eric likes okay. to smack those suckers in there. I don't have as much strength to pack them as he does. Just wait until it gets soupy. That's when it gets really exciting. There we go. I think that's You got it. Good. You can move on to the next one. Like he's digging these a little more shallow, so that's good. So that means we don't have to knock too much dirt into the bottom to start. slower too. Oh, they are different than the other ones. Yeah, we just got done with those guys. So this is our son-in-law's first experience helping out on our family farm. And so far, I'd say he was doing a really great job. He really put in the effort, and really applied himself, and was not afraid to get dirty. I'm sure he went home tired, exhausted, and probably sunburned, but he at least had the advantage of seeing how a family farm comes together to get stuff done. Whew. All right, we got all 500 planted. It took a total of six hours working pretty much nonstop. And uh, we actually had today a full pile of people helping. 500 trees really just, it doesn't look like a lot. It looks like maybe, I don't know, maybe a hundred. Each row has a little over 60 trees in it. Uh, we've got four rows of the Fraser firs, four and a half, and then four and a half rows of the Canaan firs. So the Canaan firs are actually younger trees than the Fraser firs, but the Fraser firs are a much slower growing variety of tree. They mature to Christmas tree height, which is about seven feet and anywhere from seven to 10 years. Whereas the Canaan firs will mature out in five to seven years. That's a huge difference. And when you're in the market to make money, turnaround time is everything. However, we have never grown Christmas trees before. We have heavy clay soil, and especially this year, it is very, very wet. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sunburned. I should have put some sunscreen on my arms, didn't think of it. I did wear my True Work shirt because I knew that it was gonna keep me safe from a lot of the UV rays. So I'm not sunburned anywhere else. And of course, I've got my True Work pants on. And these pants worked out great because um, they repel a lot of the water and then when they do get wet, you can see right here, they dry super fast. So you're not left being cold and wet like you would with jeans that are a pain in the butt to get off when they're wet. These were just perfect for planting. Just completely perfect. Carl, get off the pine tree! Get off! Why? Don't dump on the pine tree! Apparently the dog assumed the pine tree is a butt scratcher while well, he's also making deposits on the pine trees. Well, if I looked relieved here, it's because I was relieved. I thought we were done, at least for, I don't know, maybe six months, maybe plant some more in the fall. And then Eric would go through and fill in this whole low area so that we could put more trees in that area which is approximately one more acre all the way down there. And no, it, it's not a pond, it's actually a drainage pit that had been dug out years ago to add fill dirt to the driveway. And it just keeps filling with water every spring. 
So it, it's not an environmental hazard to fill it in. Regardless, much to my horror, uh, we were not done planting pine trees. No, we actually ended up with 600 more trees to plant. And these actually were much older than any of the other trees that we currently had, which would then put us ahead of schedule. Hey guys, and welcome back to round two. Little did we know, we were gonna have to plant 600 more. Let's go. So the morning started out about how you'd expect. We got everything all set up. Eric ran a test hole and of course, sliced right through the cable line. So we didn't have internet for a couple of days, but other than that, it seemed to work pretty good. We measured off the distance using a very high tech system of measuring and I were able to rip a line in the soil to prepare the ground to hand dig the holes. I'm not sure why, but we figured hand digging the holes would be a better way to go for these trees, but I don't know. This is gonna be new. We haven't tried this before. All of this is new, it's always new. So if you've ever done this, or uh, your family's done this, put in the comments down below how you guys manage this. Come on. Goodness sakes. I'm gonna play with you all day. So Eric's going through remarking the whole spots. Yeah, I'm sure. Maybe. All right, so these are bare root trees. We got these from Eric's boss, who is also planting pine trees, Christmas trees. Sorry. Um, you can see they're in a little bit worse shape. These are uh, Canaan firs. Canaan firs, and these are a little bit older than what we have. They are Canaan fir. Plus two, 10 to 16 inches. And this sucker is heavy. Oh, the roots are nice and wet. Are they? I guess they are. We watered these last night just because. Actually, they don't feel especially wet, they just feel damp, which I guess is pretty good. So how many are in a bundle? So these are what's known as bare root, which means there's no dirt on them. So what we're doing here, our planting shovel is this deep. So we wanna cut our roots to the depth of that planting shovel. So, cause you don't wanna J root your trees. So we're gonna cut these off. Put them in our bucket. Root dip. So these buckets um, have a special rooting supplement in there that's supposed to help them retain moisture. There are lots and lots of different kinds of rooting buckets you can mix up. Um, this is just one that we got a hold of. I'll put some links down below if you guys are interested in taking a look at a couple other ones. These roots are really Wow, long. that's a lot of roots. <laughs> Doesn't that make you nervous cutting that much root off? I don't know. I mean, you don't want to stuff it down in there. Wow. Hopefully that she will be okay. <laughs> that makes you really sad. It's like chopping all your hair off, except your hair doesn't feed you. So now these were trees that were grown in actual dirt and not in buckets. Yep. Pots. So this is gonna be definitely a more time consuming process because we have to go through, we have to trim the roots, we have to put them in the bucket to soak for a little bit. And then that has to get carried out there and then holes put in the ground and each tree individually inserted and packed. And we have, it does take a long time augering the holes, though. It does, yeah. 
So I don't know, we'll, we'll see. see. But at least I don't have to worry about getting sunburned today. All right, so we're gonna use this planting shovel and we're gonna step on the ground and we wanna make a V. And again, the ground is really soft because we ripped it first. Okay. And we got this shovel on Amazon so we can try to put a link on there. So we grab a tree out. Actually, this one I was going to put in one of the... Oh, look at that stuff is looking slurryfied. Look at that. Oh, yeah. This one I actually wanted to put. All right, so we take a tree like this. Oh, look, I see the slurry is like sticking to all the roots on there. Mm -hmm. Take a tree like this, shove it down in there. Make sure you try to get the roots down in there. We got a root popping out right here. That's fine. And then we're gonna, you plant, go deep and then you want to pull up on the tree because then that pulls the roots straight. Let me take the shovel. Doesn't it need to come up a little bit more? Yeah, I'm gonna pack it a little bit. Go next to the tree. Just work it in like that. Or you can try your foot. I don't know, we're just experimenting right now. So this is one technique you saw online on how to do this. Pull it up a little bit so it's at ground level. see how soft the ground is this is why you do this in the springtime and in the rainy part of fall the ground is Make soft sure enough up and down when we have fertilizer tabs we're gonna go get them <clears up throat> on. here's your tree all right do we want to try it without doing the side shovel and see how that works we can try that just with a foot pack yeah why don't you do the next one let's see how that goes and you can try the devil bar too whichever one you like i find this one works I think I like that way better. You know, it's too bad that these trees are not planted next to the other canon firs because it'd be interesting to see the difference in the growth rate. Yeah, this is bare root versus potted. Well, but I mean, not just that. I mean, they're different growth points. Oh, yeah. I think these are a year ahead of those. These, are, these have more branches on them for sure. Yeah, they're definitely older trees. So there's 40 trees. <laughs> so we only have 560 more to go. Lay in the wind. 
Man, you look pretty muddy. What have you been doing? <laughs> yep, getting rained out today. Great timing. My daddy, come here. Thank you. Moisey. Daddy. Pinkle. She's asking for it. Oh, come on. Daddy, come on. Pinkle. Come on, Pinkle. Come on. There you go. Stay. Stay. Good girl. It took several days to get the bare root trees all planted, digging 600 holes by hand and stuffing the trees into every single one of them. It was a lot of work, but we got it all done. Finally, and this is about one acre's worth. We can probably fit about two acres worth all the way up here on the front part of the property once we get the pond drainage area filled in. There'll be other areas that we'll plant later on in subsequent years, and eventually we'll end up with a seven year tree rotation. We are still doing hay, don't worry. Our main producing hay fields are still planted with hay and we are still going to harvest hay. Uh, we can't take a full loss on all of our farming activities, plus we have our own critters to feed. But the area right up front has always been kind of a mixed use area. It used to be an additional horse pasture that just last year we decided to start cutting for hay. Just to give a little more added bonus to our crop. So it made sense to do the experimental to Christmas tree planting right here in this area. Plus it's right by the road, which gives a great visual and a great reminder to anybody who's curious that, hey, I think there's a Christmas tree farm starting over there. It's almost like the property was set up with the full plan in mind to be a Christmas tree farm. And when everything is said and done, it's actually gonna be a pretty cool little Christmas tree farm but you've got seven years to watch and find out. Now this is by far one of the wettest springs I can ever remember here on the property. Many of the holes, even the ones on the top level of the hill, were full of water right after we dug them. So a lot of these trees were planted into roughly four to six inches of straight muddy water. But, the varieties of trees that we selected are supposed to be rated for heavy wet conditions. Uh, we talked to the tree people, we told them what type of conditions we had, the soil pH, um, the ground type, and these were the two that they recommended for our specific soils. So all we can do is put them on the ground and wait. And like most Christmas tree farmers, hope for the best that the trees will grow. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this was enjoyable for you guys to watch. And again, if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and click the bell. I really look forward to reading your comments down below. This has been a lot of work, but it has been so exciting. And if you guys are still around in five to seven years, you'll get to see our first harvest. Until then guys, take care. We have hay harvest coming up in just a couple of weeks. So definitely stay tuned for those videos coming up. Thank you guys so much. Love you. Bye.